Hello everyone, I'm Brett, and welcome to Nightwood Guns. A while back, I did a video called, Should You Really Put a Red Dot on Your Concealed Carry Firearm? In that video, I talked about how it wasn't mandatory to have a red dot on your concealed carry firearm, but if that's truly the case, then why do all of my carry guns have red dots on them? So today, we're gonna go over why you should put a red dot on your concealed carry firearm. Now, putting a red dot on your firearm does come with some caveats that I mentioned in my previous video, such as there's a learning curve to the red dot. Anybody can put a red dot on a handgun and go to the range and shoot it well, but getting your concealed carry firearm out of the holster from concealment and finding the dot on command every time under pressure can be challenging, and it usually takes some training, some learning, and a lot of practice. Now, iron sights are absolutely good enough for self-defense and concealed carry, but that's much like how a pistol is good enough for home defense. But if you're anything like me, you like to give yourself an unfair advantage when it comes to life or death situations. Payback time. And that is what the red dot sight can offer in a concealed carry role. When you learn and get good at a red dot from the holster, you are giving yourself an unfair advantage in any situation where you need to shoot somebody in self-defense. I ran into this in the last video where people were like, why should I listen to you? What do you know? You're just some kid. How's it going? I'm Billy the Kid. And while I train often, I'm an instructor, I shoot competitively for fun. That's a lot like that scene from Wayne's World 2 when he's like, oh my god, you have to let me in. My girlfriend is in there. And then the bouncer's like, buddy. There are lots of people's girlfriends in there. There are a lot of people that own guns. There are a lot of firearm instructors. That doesn't necessarily make them good. And I like to keep these videos as short as I possibly can, so I don't want to suck up a lot of time on this. So the fastest qualifier I can give you is I'm one of 100 people in the world to have this coin. Go to Tier 1 Concealed's website, print off their 3-7s drill, give it a shot. Once you clear it, you can tell me that I'm full of shit. So what kind of unfair advantages do red dots give you in self-defense or concealed carry situations? Number one, when you're in a self-defense situation, it is common to become hyper-target focused. Now, when we're talking about iron sights, there are two ways to shoot iron sights well, and one is front sight focus, which is extremely common, and the other one is target focus. And it's pretty much accepted that the superior way to shoot iron sights is front sight focus. The problem with that is if you have a threat, you are threat focused, you need to bring your focus back to the front sight, acquire it, shoot, 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 and then go back to threat focus to assess the situation. And in a lot of cases in self-defense, when someone tries to shoot threat focused with iron sights, they don't even see their sights. They are just 100% threat focused and they are going crazy. That's why we see in law enforcement, which is one of the few metrics that we have, when we train officers to see their sights when they're shooting a threat, their hit rate goes up. Now, what if I told you, you could get the precision of front sight shooting along with the tactical advantage of threat focused shooting all in one sight setup? That's the red dot. So the best way to shoot a red dot is to be completely threat focused and superimpose the dot over the threat. And since you can remain threat focused and move your dot around, it also makes transitioning from target to target a lot faster and a lot more precise. You don't have to play that game of threat sight, threat sight, threat sight, or threat focused and I'm not even seeing my sights. So I mentioned that with the dot, you get the precision of front sight shooting and that is 100% true and it makes shooting at distance so much easier because instead of finding the threat and then finding your sights and lining up your sights and then pressing the trigger and then looking at the threat to see if your shot had an effect. Instead, you are threat focused, put the dot over it, keep pressing the trigger until it has an effect. Hey there, just wanted to pop in and say that I have a Patreon now. It's in the link in the description below. I'm also an author. My books are on Amazon, also in the link in the description below. So if you'd like to support the channel, take a look. Now there are some dissenters that will say, well, self-defense situations are up close, three to five yards in your face and they happen so fast. And those are a big chunk of self-defense situations. However, then you run into a situation like Eli Dickin ran into where he had to take out a mass shooter at 40 yards. If you are prepared for that 40 yard mass shooter, you are over-prepared at close range. And not to mention in self-defense situations, marksmanship is critical, especially in public spaces where you would be concealed carrying. You are responsible for every single round that comes out of your gun and that's including pass through. So you need to be able to have a clear backstop and you need to make sure that all of your shots land in the bad guys. Not to mention marksmanship is critical because you want to hit the vital organs. A shot in the heart is going to be better than a shot in the lungs. And that precision that you find at distance also translates close up. When you're well trained, you find that dot immediately. You can drill three holes in the dude's heart a lot faster and most importantly, a lot easier while maintaining that panicked threat focus 
during your adrenaline dump. Now there are a lot of people that can absolutely shred with iron sights, but the reason it is such an advantage to be able to maintain threat focus while having the precision of the dot on command is because in gunfights, people are moving and reacting. They're not paper USPSA targets where you can just absolutely hose them all down because you come up with a plan and they're all in the same place. Self-defense situations are a three-dimensional environment where these three-dimensional targets are moving, turning, twisting, crouching, and being able to maintain your focus on that threat and maintain awareness around you without being focused on your iron sights while shooting is a huge advantage. And of course, people have used iron sights successfully in self-defense for years and years and years, but the red dot makes your job easier. And I doubt anybody who's been in a gunfight would think, you know what, I'm glad that I didn't have more of an advantage. I'm glad that this gunfight wasn't easier for me. If you were a new shooter or a new gun owner or new to concealed carry, then I would say book a class and learn the dot first. There is no reason not to build that skill set while you're learning how to shoot the gun. It can actually be more difficult to go from being really great and set in your ways with iron sights and moving to a red dot than it is to be a new shooter where you're moldable wet clay and you learn that red dot first. You can always go back to iron sights. They're easy as long as you have basic instruction on how to line them up. It's a piece of cake. So if you're new to this, I recommend booking some beginner classes with some talented red dot instructors and learn this stuff first. There's no reason not to give yourself the gift of that unfair advantage. But just know if you try to go it yourself, you could really struggle trying to learn the dot from the holster. Not only that, maintaining the dot under recoil. And of course you can fall into the same trap that a lot of iron sight shooters moving to red dots fall into, which is you find yourself staring at the dot as you would stare at the front sight. It is important to maintain threat focus, just superimpose the dot over it. Treat the threat as the front sight, and treat your dot as the rear sight. Taking lessons or classes from someone who is talented in the use of red dots from the holster is going to give you a huge head start. And it's definitely gonna save you a lot of frustration from trying to figure it out on your own. Now, of course, you'll run across other people that are like, well, the red dot is unreliable, the battery could die, the electronics could fail. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I've seen more iron sights fail, whether that's them popping out of the gun or drifting, than I have seen red dots die. Especially when we're talking about quality red dots. These quality optics, like Aimpoint, Trigicon, and then at the budget tier, Hollow Sun, they are extremely durable to the point where this can take a direct blow from something really hard and where it would have drifted a rear sight, this thing's gonna maintain zero. And of course, if for whatever reason the optic does fail, that's why it's important to have your backup irons. But one is none and two is one. So in conclusion, you should put a red dot on your concealed carry firearm because once you learn how to use it from the holster, it allows you to maintain threat focus while gaining precision and speed, which all result in a slight unfair advantage that could make the difference in a gunfight. There's a reason that so many people are putting dots on their guns. They're here to stay, they're constantly innovating, dots are getting better. The only reason not to toss a red dot on your handgun is if you just don't have the time or the money to adopt the new skill set of finding the dot out of the holster from the draw and tracking the dot under recoil. Because you might just fall into the camp of, if it's not broke, don't fix it, you're good with iron, so why fiddle with things? But putting a dot on your handgun, training, and learning those skill sets will give you an unfair advantage. But when it comes to life or death, I'm willing to spend the money and the time to gain any advantage I can get. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video today, everyone. It was good seeing you again, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm Brett, and this was Nightwood Guns. Nightwood out.